Good evening, YouTube. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'll be talking about gel extraction, a method of taking DNA out of an agarose gel, and then maybe later on using it downstream for sequencing. My name is Carter. I'm a PhD bioengineer and founder of Scigen.com. Today, what you're going to learn from this video is number one, you're going to learn what gel extraction is, the protocol, a step-by-step -step instruction on the theory, and you're going to get application because you're actually going to go to this website, scigen.com, and you're going to look up gel extraction, and you're going to find all the different protocols that are available in the literature, and you can use any one of them in lab today, right after you look at this video. All right, and right before we get into it, make sure you like, subscribe, and ask any questions down below. All of this will not only help my channel, but it'll also help your understanding. Let's get into it. Cool. Let's start with what is gel extraction. Like I said, you might have previously run an agarose gel and you might have found that all of your DNA fragments separated. Now you want to actually take one of those fragments out because that's the one that you really, really want. And then you want to transfer it downstream to some kind of process such as sequencing. So that's the idea behind gel extraction. If none of this makes sense, you probably need to learn a bit more about agarose gel acrisis. I've got a great video about it. You can go take a look at my show notes and you'll find the link to it. So agarose is actually a polysaccharide. And all the chains that are within agarose can actually have hydrogen bonding in between the chains. So what you see here is a transition from a sol state into a gel state and eventually into the final agarose gel, which looks like that. But what you see here is all the arrows are actually reversible. You can actually go back from that gel structure into the sol state, in which case, there's no longer a gel and any kind of DNA that's inside the gel can get released. The same can actually happen using a buffer. And this is what happens when you use one of the many commercially available gel extraction kits, like the one we're gonna look at today via a protocol. And then right after we've liberated the DNA from our agarose, we're gonna run it through a gel. And this gel is gonna bind the DNA. We're gonna do a few wash and elution steps and finally, we'll actually collect it at the bottom of the tube. And we can then use it downstream for whatever application we'd like. In our case, let's just say sequencing is our downstream application. All right, let's get to the first step of our protocol. So today, we're going to go through this Kaya Quick Gel Extraction Kit protocol, which is a user-developed protocol. And I'm going to link to this in the description. This protocol has a whole bunch of great notes, tips, and tricks. And we're going to cover all of these within this short YouTube video. So step one of our method is to excise the gel slice. And you do that using a scalpel, like is shown here. Once you excise it, you need to weigh the gel slice because that determines how much of the diffusion buffer we're going to add to actually solubilize the gel. Then we incubate at 50 degrees for 30 minutes and we centrifuge to get rid of any of the chunks of gel that are remaining that haven't been solubilized. Be sure that while you're excising that gel, that you're using a safe UV trans illuminator with a face shield like is shown here. This should protect you from any of the UV that's coming off of the trans illuminator, which is illuminating the DNA bands that are inside your gel that are also stained with some kind of a UV active stain, such as ethidium bromide. All right, if you didn't understand this, make sure you go back and look at my gel electrophoresis protocol because that will show you how to actually run an agarose gel and stain it with ethidium bromide. Our next step is to prepare the sample and clean it up even further. And in order to do this, we need to use a pipette or some kind of a pasture pipette to pass our sample through some glass wool. Here, the glass wool is in gray and our sample is in green. And you can see that as you pass the sample through the glass wool, whatever gel fragments there are get captured inside the glass wool. That's step one. After we've passed our sample through the glass wool, we should now measure what's the volume of liquid that's actually come out the other side because that's going to determine how much of the QG buffer we're going to add to it. We need this sample to be pretty acidic. And the way the Kaijin kit allows you to do this is by adding the QG buffer and looking at the color to see if it's yellow. 
If it's not yellow, that means it's too basic. And in that case, we probably need to add some sodium acetate in order to make it more acidic. Our next step after we prepare these samples by making them the right pH and getting rid of any of the remaining gel fragments is to actually load it onto a purification gel column, which is coming up next. In step three, we're gonna be binding the DNA to the spin column, which is called the Kaya-Quick spin column. And the reason we adjusted the pH in the previous step is because the DNA won't bind to the column unless it's the right pH. So if you've done the previous step and you've made it acidic enough, then you're ready to put the sample onto the column and just wait for a little bit, let it bind to the column, then move it over to the centrifuge and centrifuge it for 30 to 60 seconds. Take a look at the manufacturer's instructions because they'll tell you how fast to spin it as well. We typically do about 800 G, but it totally depends on which kit you actually use. And after you've actually spun it, you'll see that a lot of the liquid goes from the top to the bottom, but some of it actually binds inside the gel. And that's what is shown here. Our sample should actually be inside the gel while everything else has flown through. Our next step, after we've done the initial spin and actually bound the DNA to the column, is to do a wash. And for this, we use a PE buffer. This has some kind of ethanol in it. What we're gonna do in this step is to add the PE buffer to the top, and then we're gonna centrifuge it so that it washes, and eventually anything that's non-DNA, such as some kind of ions that were there from our electrophoresis, or maybe some of the buffer elements that were there from our electrophoresis, all of that comes out along with the PE wash buffer. Our sample again, is still inside the column, is just a little bit cleaner. All right, so our sample is still bound to the column and we've already cleaned it. It's finally time to get it up. And in order to do that, we use EB buffer, which has tris chloride in it with a certain pH. As they say, this elution buffer only works when it's between pH 7 and 8.5. That's the maximal elution efficiency. So when you use this protocol, make sure that even the water that you're adding in order to dilute this EB buffer has the right pH. That's what they've posted here in this important note. So we're gonna add elution buffer on top. And this elution buffer, as it flows through our column, because we're gonna actually spin it again, as it flows through the column, it's going to disrupt the interactions between the gel and the sample. And in the end, you should end up with elution buffer and sample that's now come to the bottom of your centrifuge tube. And you're ready for the next step. That's it. Now you've learned how to take an agarose gel and take out the DNA from it so that you can use it downstream for whatever application. In our case, we said it's sequencing. That's what this is supposed to represent. Sorry for the bad drawing. I hope you've now learned how to actually do gel extraction, and you're ready to go into a lab and apply it. Take a look at my website, SciGen.com, which has a whole bunch of biology and biochemistry methods that have been gathered from all the research articles out there. And you can always do gel extraction or look for any other method that you're interested in. Make sure you also like, subscribe, and ask questions. This is your chance to ask me anything you'd like. Thank you very much. This is Carter, signing off.